Hi, welcome to the serverless enablement course, serverless landscape overview. We're going to start this presentation with the history of serverless, and then we're going to go through the various technologies present in the serverless landscape. We'll introduce the Cloud Native Computing Federation and then briefly talk about what's next for serverless. It can be argued that the serverless technology has been around since 2006, putting images and content, etc., in a bucket on S3. That's essentially a serverless solution. There's no management or knowledge of the server by the developer. The term serverless as we know it was first used by Iron.io in the 2012 blog post, Why the Future of Software is Serverless. The serverless space really exploded with the introduction of AWS Lambda in 2014. Since then, we've seen the introduction of serverless solutions from all the major cloud providers, Google, Microsoft, and IBM. We've also had the creation of the CNCF Serverless Working Group in 2018. When we started looking at content for this presentation, we identified a source of statistics for serverless technology use in the industry. The most recent survey we could find was the Serverless Community Survey from early 2020, designed by members of the serverless community to get an understanding of the current and projected use of serverless within the development community. Responded to by over 500 developers, it gave a not surprising snapshot of the current serverless technologies. The first technology we're going to take a look at in the serverless landscape is AWS Lambda. As we mentioned earlier, AWS announced Lambda in 2014, going into GA in 2015. AWS Lambda set the benchmark for serverless technologies and is by far the most commonly used serverless offering in the market, with over 61% of developers in the survey using AWS Lambda. Language support is reasonably broad with JavaScript, Go, Python, Java, and C Sharp as options. One of the key strengths of, of AWS Lambda is how it seamlessly integrates with other AWS services, specifically the ability to trigger a Lambda function from events such as S3, DynamoDB, Kinesis, SNS, and API Gateway requests. Microsoft announced Azure Functions in March 2016. Azure Functions scored well in the serverless community survey with around 10% of developers indicating their use. Again, they have a broad range of languages supported, but also support scripting languages such as Bash. Event triggers follow a similar path to AWS Lambda with triggers from Azure services such as storage blobs, Cosmos DB, HTTP requests, message queues, and scheduled events. One of the key differentiators of Azure Functions is the underlying OS, in this case, is Windows as opposed to AWS Lambdas. Google launched Cloud Functions in March 2017. Google Cloud Functions provide a more limited set of language options, JavaScript, Go, and Python. Google Cloud Functions scored low on the survey with just under 7% of respondents indicating use. Google Cloud Functions again follow a similar path for event traders. One key differentiator is the integration with Firebase, opening up Cloud Functions to Firebase mobile events. IBM Cloud Functions launched in 2016, providing a broad set of language support, including Ruby. Very little usage according to the serverless community, around 0.05% of developers. Based on Apache OpenWhisk, container-based, and can run on-premise. It's a more certain limited set of triggers when compared to AWS and Azure. Knative is an open source community project which adds components for deploying, running, and managing serverless cloud native applications on Kubernetes. Version 0.1 of Kubernetes was released in 2018. Red Hat Serverless released for general availability in April 2020 with OpenShift 4.4. Extensive language support, essentially anything that can run in a container can run as Knative. And according to the serverless community, there's a, around 1.5% of developers said they use Knative. There's a wide range of triggers, specifically Kafka and sync sources. Portability is forefront of Knative, whether on-premise, in the cloud, or in a third-party data center. The CNCF was founded in 2016 and announced the Serverless Working Group in 2018. We'd recommend you read the CNCF Serverless White Paper. It's an excellent foundation in serverless and serverless use cases. The Serverless Working Group released the Cloud Events Standard in October 2019. Cloud Events is a specification for describing event data in a common way. Cloud Events provides a consistent way of describing events across event sources and languages. Cloud Events provides SDKs in languages such as Go, JavaScript, 
Java, C Sharp, and Python. Cloud events are supported by key native events, Azure, Event Grid, and Oracle Cloud. In addition to developing the Cloud Event standard, the CNCF has also published the CNCF Serverless Landscape Infographic. This is an interactive way to look at the various technologies making up the serverless landscape. We'd recommend you all check this out at landscape.cncf.io. The CNCF have defined what serverless means and two personas involved with serverless projects. According to the CNCF, serverless computing refers to the concept of building and running applications that do not require server management. It describes a finely grained deployment model where applications bundled as one or more functions are uploaded to a platform, then executed, scaled, and built in response to the exact demand needed at the moment. There are two primary serverless personas. The developer writes code for and benefits from the serverless platform, which provides them the point of view that there are no servers, nor that their code is always running. The provider deploys the serverless platform for an external or internal customer. Servers are still required to run a serverless platform. The provider will need to manage servers. The provider will have some cost for running the platform, even when they're idle. A self-hosted system can still be considered serverless. Typically, one team access provider and the other is developer. So what's next for serverless? We've seen versions 1.0 or serverless in AWS Lambda, etc., and version 1.5 with serverless containers, as well as, as with Knative. What will version 2.0 look like? Key things will be state handling, e.g. Uh, Dapper, allowing serverless applications to scale up and down while maintaining state in an abstracted fashion. Enterprise integration patterns, for example, change data capture using things like Debezium. We'll be covering Debezium later in the enablement. Advanced meshing capabilities, seamless PaaS integration, and enterprise-ready event sources. That's it for the serverless landscape overview. Again, we would recommend you check the CNCF website and serverless white paper for up-to-date information on the serverless landscape.